Hello everyone. Today is Saturday, September the 2nd, 2023. My name is Shelly. This is my channel Proverbs 3122. And this is a channel about cross stitch and stitching and a little bit of diamond painting every now and then. Um, quilting. And this is floss tube number 129. So, I hope everybody's doing well. If you're new, I hope you see something that you like and makes you want to come back again. Um, currently, I'm filming usually the first Saturday of every month. On the first Saturday, we have our local stitching group that meets up. And after I get home, everything's kind of gathered and it's just sort of a good, um, a good opportunity for me to, to film. I don't want to quit filming, but with working and um, health issues. It's just a lot to film every week or even every two weeks. And so this is how I'm gonna do it for now. So anyway, I'm glad everybody's here. If you're returning, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I love visiting with you, either watching yours if you have one or you know, talking to you about stitching on mine. So. Um, I'm going to save life update for the end, and I'm going to do haul first. Um, I just went to Hobby Lobby after I left Stitching Group um, and picked up a few things that I needed and a few that I didn't need. Um, they had these, they had some of this stuff on clearance, so like this was, um, $4.50. I'm wondering if my um, Ukrainian bookmark will fit in here. I think it might. And so that's kind of what I have in mind for it. So they had that. They had, um, sorry for the crinkles, but I just got home with it and it's still wrapped. So um, they had this which was regularly $24.99, and it was on sale for $11. thought that was real cute. I don't know if I'll put any kind of stitching on it, um, but, you know, I like the way it looks just to sit out as decor. Kind of rolls. And there's one more piece of that type of thing. This was really cute. It's this little butterfly. How cute is that? Um, I know it was on clearance. This one doesn't have a clearance tag on it. I hope they gave me the clearance price. But anyway, I think it was like $4 or something like that too. It was supposed to be. So those are the things that I didn't go in there for. I also didn't necessarily go in for um, zippers, but they had their zippers uh, 99 cents, and so I went ahead and got a bunch for bags. Um, I needed to get some flosses for a exchange that I'm participating in. Uh, it's a, um autumn exchange, but... Um, the person I'm buying for wanted Christmas stuff, and so I'm kind of getting the wish you want it. So, and then I picked up some seed beads, some smaller ones, and different colors. Um, I have some that could have worked that were yellow for a piece I'll show you in a little while, a new start, but it, the yellow I had was just too bright, and so they didn't have a really light yellow. Um, or they did, it was like in this multi-pack with, the beads were a little bit big and I, they looked cheap. So, um, I passed on those and just will use one of these. And then I got this for, um, using for my stockings. So, what stockings am I talking about? Um, these by Blackbird. This is one of them. So in the pattern they have, um, they have a bead that's sort of that color. It's not the same type of bead, but that's what I'm gonna use. This is the garnet. 
So I picked up those, and these were 50% off. Basically, everything I got except for the floss was on sale. Um, I also had, uh, went online and ordered um, a bolt of, what's it called? Wrap and zap. I want to make like some potholder type gifts for Christmas. And so I bought the bolt from Joann's. They had it like 40% off online. And of course, you know, I prefer to buy stuff than pay for shipping. And so I also ordered some just solid background fabric. Um, I went ahead and got the eight yards, which gave you an additional 15% discount. So now this is supposed to be, I want to say I chose Snow White. It's really kind of creamy looking. So, but you know, I can still use it for background. Not a big deal. Um, at the retreat last month, no, in July, I won some pony needles, and I'm really enjoying stitching with them, and so these are not exactly like what I have. I have the black ones, which seem to um, slide really nicely through your fabric. They're coated with, with some kind of, I don't know what they're coated with, but um, there's no drag, but these are pony, just not the coated black ones, so I'm going to give those a try. Got those from Amazon. I also got from Amazon um, another um, jewelry case to make a stitching case. I don't know if you guys watched Colorado Cross Stitcher. She had a, um, a special edition floss tube with Tanya from the Scarlet House. And she, Tanya was showing how she does her um, jewelry cases made over into a needlework case. And so... Um, she had one that she was able to fit her hoop in the bottom, you know, in the middle part of it. Like, she was able to rearrange it, and it was large enough where she could fit a small hoop. Now, I don't use a hoop, but I have thought that it would be great to have something that I could stick, you know, one travel project and threads in the bottom of it. And so, I went on to Amazon, and I found this beauty. This was like 20 bucks, you guys. And so I haven't done anything as far as decorating it on the inside yet. Um, I just haven't felt up to, I haven't felt creative enough to do that. But um, it comes with this little extra little case that folds up. And it has, you know, the little ring things, which I'll probably cover with, cover like with some fabric and some batting just to stick pins in. Um, I'll probably decorate over here with just some pretty ephemera. And then this was, um, this little bottom part was divided. I took them, took the dividers out. I'll probably put at least one of them back in just to make it a little bit more, um, you know, where things stay in place, but that so that goes inside there and then the bottom had you know divisions too and I just pulled those out so I can just fit a whole I can even fit my smaller uh, Samsung tablet in here and so yeah I snapped that up I mean if you know I told my husband I was like if I bought this specifically made for needlework this case would be over a hundred bucks and so, you know, the $20 I thought was great. I wish they had more colors. They have this color, they have black, and they have white. I think I'm probably going to pick up a white one or a black one to do like a bumblebee-themed one. Um, you know, I don't know for sure, but I wish they would have some different colors in this one. So, I'm kind of like thinking of, you know... Um, doing different ones for different needlework like I've sort of doing uh wool applique you know can put all of my supplies in there um and that would be my you know wool applique case that kind of thing um I think that's all the haul I did get some charts on uh some pdf charts on Etsy um I uh, don't remember what they are, but, um, hang on. 
what that one so is. there's they're starting a um, sale on um, Facebook and the group Crafts and Books. I'll try to remember to link them below. But it's um, this one designer, Stitches So Beautiful. She takes artwork and she's licensed to create cross stitch from it. And so um, this is one that I purchased. I don't, I'm not going to participate in the sale, but I really loved her patterns. Um, and I'm not participating just because I've got enough started already. And then I also picked up this one I thought was real pretty. I love bluebirds. I love flowers. So I picked those up. And she had a sale going. And so Those two charts were like $16, so I didn't think that was too bad. Okay, so um, stitching wise, I think maybe some of the some of the stuff that I have to show you guys, I think I may have shown you one last video, but I don't have them, you know, like they're after I um, I filmed on the 28th last time, I guess. Which I don't know why I filmed on the 28th. But anyway, that's what I have written down. I filmed on the 28th. Who knows? I usually do that first Saturday in the month. But anyway, if I've shown you these already, I'm sorry for showing them to you again. But, um, you know, no big deal, right? It's stitching. We all like to see it. No matter how many times we see it over and over again. At least that's how I feel anyway. So this is Fat Quarter Shops, um, Be Merry, no, I always call it the wrong thing, it's Evergreen Stitch Along, this is a free stitch along that they did over in, um, in July, and so, um, this is my progress, I did decide to do the, the, uh, tree topper and some Petite Treasure Braid, I'm pulling my own colors, and this is a 28 count with shelt linen in the color water lily and i'm only using one strand over two threads so got that done and i've also recently put some more stitches in on introverted which is from um silver creek samplers so, I'm trying to think when you saw it last, I don't remember. Um, I know I've put this down here in. I did use some silk um, from Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers, I think, to do the scissors, and they were kind of like an oil slick to me. And I finished the tomato. I started the skein of floss. I think I did some more up here. And so, I'm loving the way this is coming out. This is an 18 count um, oatmeal Ada. And then last month for Webco, these are the ones I really think that I've shown you guys, but I can't remember. I have them written after I filmed, so. But this is the Linen and Threads Mystery Sal from 2020 and I'm currently working right in here on this motif so this is a 14 count oatmeal Ada and I'm using a um, variegated um, it's DMC it's not in the variegated line I can't think of what the name of the line is but it's 4211 it's almost like an overdyed. And then also called last month for Whipco was uh, my collecting colors and I finished this block right here. This is a freebie from Orphil designed by Susan Aki. I'm stitching it on 28 count Monaco and I'm using DMC. 
um, my choices because she calls for oral floss. Okay, so that's those. Um, okay, I've been working on my um, Jeanette Douglas bouquet still at lunch at work. And I finished July and have moved on to September. Now I did skip June. June was the tomatoes and I'm just not, you know, I wasn't, want, I don't want to decorate with tomatoes. I just don't. I mean, you know, maybe like little pin cushions or whatever, but the tomato plants, not really. So anyway, this is the July one and then this is the start of September. September. So I guess it's August that I skipped. Yeah, it's August, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, these are all of them that I've done so far. And I'm going to cut these apart and make pillows. So that's why they're just sort of scattered. It's a 28 count Irish linen from Michaels in the color tea dyed. And I'm pulling my own over dyed flosses um, to stitch these. And that just makes a really good lunchtime, um, lunchtime stitch. Even if I only have 10 minutes to, you know, to stitch, I mean, those little bitty pieces, if I could stitch every day, even four days, you know, every day that I work, the four days that I work at lunch, even 10 minutes, I could probably get these knocked out in maybe a few weeks. Um, I don't know what to do with my stuff after I get done with it. Okay, and then I've also worked, I worked a good bit on, um, on Jane Eyre. I've kind of, kind of made it my focus piece rather than um, flea market flowers. Um, probably just avoiding doing flea market flowers. But I really wanted to try to get more of this done before Anne of Green Gables started. Um, and, you know, of course, Anne of Green Gables has started. I'm about to show you my start in a second. But, um, you know, I wanted to get... I mean, it would have been nice if I could have finished it all, but no, that wasn't going to happen. So this is a 32 count that I hand dyed, and so I'm using two strands of my own choices of over-dyed flosses. And I decided on this border that I didn't want to do, you know, it was like multiple colors, and I'm just not down with that. And so I just picked a Weeks Dye Works that was, you know, kind of variegated with green and, you know, sort of a pink color. So I don't remember what I had last time, but um, I don't have any of my little clips. Anyway, so I told you guys that I was not going to stitch the, I think I told you guys, I put a picture on social media. I don't remember if I discussed it on my video or not, but um, in the original pattern, there's a like silhouette of Mr. Rochester on this side and then Jane on this side. Um, I wanted to do quotes instead. And so I found um, two of my favorite quotes from, you know, one from him and one from her. And so I had charted and stitched in his. It could probably be a little bit better centered, but um, it is what it is. And so that quote is, every atom of your flesh is as dear to me as my own. In pain and in sickness, it would still be dear. And the one that I wanna put for um, Jane is the quote where she says, um, you know, uh, like where she tells him, you know, do you think I don't have any, you know, feelings or whatever? I have just as much, you know, as you do. I don't remember the exact quote, but, you know, that's what I'm going to put, the exact quote. Not what I just said, of course. Okay, so that's Stitching Book book Club, if I didn't say that. Um, if you're not aware of that, that is a club. Um, where she designs patterns for books and we read the books. And so um, 
Jane Eyre has been over for a while and I just, you know, didn't keep up with the sow, but now she's started Anne of Green Gables. And this is my start on that. And so this is the uh, piece that I bought the beads for. These little flowers right here are supposed to have three French knots in them. I can't stand French knots. I hate French knots. And so um, I, th I think I might go with this. I think this might be pretty. But, you know, also I have the option to do this, which I think would blend in with the fabric too much, or this. So I'm using her call for flosses. Surprise. I did dye my own fabric. This is a 36 count opalescent and I dyed it with some yellow and pink and um, I chose the opalescent to, um, you know, bring to mind the Lake of Shining Waters. I started reading, you know, I've been reading the book and oh my god, I just love it. It makes me want to go back and watch the movies. So, unfortunately, this part is not complete and they've already she's already released the second part so I'm behind again but oh well I just love it it's beautiful so that was a new start um let's see did I have any other I think that's the only new start that I had yes Okay, so um, my Blackbird Designs piece right now that I'm using for BBD Weekend Sal, which is the first weekend of every month, um, I'm using Summer Jubilee, and I worked some on it yesterday and then brought it today to Stitch Group and worked on it there. Got a needle in it and it's tangled up. This is the, um, this is that pony black needle. And they're not petites, but I really like them anyway. Man, if I made a petite, that's all I would buy. Well, this is my progress. I finally got done with the flag. I did have to frog a little bit more, but I finally got that thing done last night. Um... And then did um, this uh, vine and this leaf, which is satin stitch, last night. And then today I did, uh, started on this, this urn flower pot. This is a 40 count anthracite linen from Zweigart. I'm using my own choices of over dyed flosses. And my goal on that is to get, like, I've divided it into 12 parts and to get, you know, a 1 12th every month done. So, I did buy this today off of a lady at um, Stitch Group. She had accidentally bought two. And so, um, the Weeping Willows. So, that's um, every opening flower from Brenda Gervais with I Needle and Thread. And man, those weeping willows. So pretty. Okay. Um, let's see. Show y'all evergreen already. It's not evergreen. Is it evergreen? I can't remember. I always want to say be merry, but it's evergreen. And then when I say evergreen, I'm thinking, is it be merry? Yeah, I think it's evergreen. Um, oh, I was watching, um, I was watching Denise over at Black Ribbon Stitch Studio uh, a few weeks ago. And <laughs> she, I don't remember what exactly she was talking about, but, you know, basically talking about things that she hadn't finished. And she said, I have a black belt in partial arts. And I about died laughing. <laughs> it's like, that's hilarious. I love it. Uh, 
Okay, so, um, well, there's one piece that I forgot that I stitched on, so I'll have to grab it in a minute. I did stitch some on my Shannon Christine ornament. Currently working on number four still, which is right here. I haven't been working on it a lot. I just worked on it a little bit last month. So, this is a 28 count um, Cashel linen, and I'm using her. Excuse me. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm using her call for DMC flosses. I am um, doing the beading. I did change her metallic from, I think she called for chronic. I'm using petite treasure braid. I just find it a lot easier to stitch with. So, some of that um, done. And then, I worked some on I worked some on Elizabeth and I'm gonna work on her this coming week. This is Elizabeth Weston from Hands Across the Sea samplers. And she's a big mama. And I am currently working right in here. So, um, I don't know, uh, you know, I talked about this a while back, this color right here, I had a different dye lot. And so I went to Joanne's and I got a different dye lot, but I accidentally used the other one um, on this tree, but you know, I, was I going to go in and frog it? No. Does it matter that it's two different colors, three different colors it might be? I don't know. I don't, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> come on. That's just kind of stuff just does not bother me. So, um, one thing, let's see that excited me to no end. So, this is that tree that I'm stitching right here. And so, this is the bottom. Look how close I am to the bottom, you guys. Now, I do have to, you know, <laughs> I do have to stitch all of this, go across and stitch this border, but that's how close I am to the bottom on one side. Like, um, I think the page ends about right here, and so it's just like a partial page, the rest of it. So there's several, you know, three or four pages at the end that are just partial pages. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I worked on that, and then at the last week of last month, I did start working on some samplers to kind of lead into Sampler September, and so... I'll show you those that I worked on. Let's see. Um, okay, so I worked on Newcastle Bouquet from Teresa Kogut. Didn't get a whole lot done. Um, but she, this is pulled for September for Whipgo, and so I'll get 500 stitches on it this month. But I did work on, I got, um, I got these, um, these three flowers. I got the tops put on those, and then I did some more on the bird. And can I just say, I know Teresa Koga does not watch my video 
Um, but God, if somebody knows her personally, please tell her to do an overlap on her charts. They, and she may have started doing that now. You know, she was, she's not a cross-stitcher. I think she has learned to cross-stitch in recent years, but so this may have, you know, made her realize how hard it is to do when you don't have an overlap on a chart. And so, um, it took me a while to figure this out, but anyway. So this fabric and the fabric that Elizabeth has stitched on, these are both um, hand-dyed fabrics by Devin FL over on Instagram. They're both 36 count. Now this one I just bought out of her Etsy shop when she had an Etsy shop. The one for Elizabeth, she actually uh, custom dyed that for me to mimic the one that she did for herself. She changed it a little bit, but the one that she made for herself, when I saw that it stitched on that, it was like it was made to be stitched on it. And so I knew that I wouldn't want to stitch it on anything else besides that. Okay, so, and I basically worked on one of these like one day last week, just one day each. This one is so hard to put away. And, oh man, I absolutely love it. And it's really, it's really stitching up fast, except for the over one. So the words are over one. This is Sampler Hope from Stitches Through the Years over on Etsy. I'm stitching it on a, um, um, it's an x design. I can't remember the name of the fabric. Um, but I'm using my own, my own over dye flosses. My dye lots were just different than what the picture looked like. And so there is a little bit of beading on these clusters right here. And so I think I think I'm gonna do this in memory of someone, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, I've been, I was stitching on this this past week and thinking about this person. And so I think I'm gonna stitch it in his honor. Just gorgeous. Um, and I stitched on I think there was one night where I didn't stitch on a sampler and so one of my samples that I had picked for this week got left out, but um, it's okay. I did stitch on Annie Morris, which is from Hands Across the Sea. This is a 37 uh, count Russian tea cake from Legacy. I think it's Legacy. And I'm using the call for 103s. The only thing is that, and I couldn't find where I'd done a sample, but I guess I tried doing it with one strand and I just didn't like the coverage. And so I'm doing it in two strands, which I don't really like that as much. You know, I just don't like it, especially with these, um, these flosses, this is the first time I've really stitched with these, and they have a weird twist to them, and so um, I don't think you can do the loop method. So you have to like cut two lengths and lay them side by side, and I just don't like that, but it's no big deal. I just like the coverage better. And you know, I don't have a hard and fast like rules that I go by on that. It's sort of how I want it to look. Um, like my Christmas tree one, uh, that's a 28 count. I'm only doing one strand. Um, I have a 32 count that I'm doing two strands. And, the, you know, this is 37, which, you know, when I stitch on 36, I usually only do one strand. And the silk is supposed to be slightly thicker. And so, it just sort of surprised me that I needed to use two strands to get the coverage I wanted. But it's spread out enough where I think it's gonna be okay as far as like, I'm not gonna, 
I'm probably not going to run into a whole lot of issues where it gets too tight to stitch, you know, with that thick of a, th a thread. Okay, that is all of my, it's all my stitching, cross stitching, except for one piece that I forgot. And maybe I'll just stick a picture in. So, um, um, that is the Shine On sampler from uh, Bonnie and Camille. It's in their Quilt Bee book. That's the only place you can get that pattern. Um, I'm stitching it. I think it's a 25 count um, even weave, maybe Lugana. I'm not positive, but. I'm stitching that with their call for um, Cosmo flosses. Okay, so I think the last time I talked to you guys, I told you that I was about to start doing some wool applique. Um, if I didn't, you know, it's like, did I post this or did I share this in my video? I don't know, especially when you go too long in between them, but anyway. Um, Christine over at Stitch All The Things is doing the patriotic um, sampler from Buttermilk Basin. And every time she showed it, I just loved it. And so I decided to go ahead and get the kit. And so I got my first block done. Um, my thoughts are that I love wool applique uh, a thousand million times better than I like. You know, needle turn applique. Uh, I hate needle turn. This was very pleasant to do, other than the fact that I had problems getting the, um, I used, you know, like um, heat and bond, and I had problems getting the heat and bond um, to adhere to the background fabric after I attached it to the wool. I didn't have any problems with, you know, putting it on the wool and getting it to stick. Um, but I asked for some tips over in the Buttermilk Basin Facebook group and got some good tips. But I did, um, you know, the first middle part that I cut out, I scorched it trying to get the stupid thing to adhere. And so um, the background got a little scorched too. I don't know if you really can tell, but, um, you know, at that point I was like, I might end up having a tea dye this whole thing when I'm done but I think it'll be okay. But anyway, that's the first block done. I have the second block um, ready to stitch. I've got it all um, adhered. And I had problems with this one too, even using the tips that they gave me. See that part right there is just not adhered to the background. So this is the second block. And I also have all of my, um, I have all of my pieces adhered to the wall and ready to cut out for each block as they come along. Now the Facebook group is doing the order of the blocks a little bit different, but they're done with it already. And so I figured I would just do it um, in the order that the magazine listed it. Um, let me see. The only other thing that I wanted to mention cross stitch wise is, um, you know, bought those, showed you those full coverage pieces. I've got, um, two full coverages that I'm working on currently. Um, one is on just regular Monaco. Um, the other one is on an 18 count Easy Grit Ada. I don't really like stitching on Ada at all. Um, I mean, I do, you saw projects that are, excuse me, that are on Ada today, but um, it's not my favorite thing to stitch on. And the 18 count I find is really stiff compared to the other ones. And so um, it's just not my favorite thing to stitch on. And so I've kind of been, you know, wondering, okay, like going forward, what count do I want to use for full coverage pieces? So I went over to Jan Hicks's channel and she's got lots of good information on her channel. If you haven't watched her, you know, um, I'm sure y'all have, unless you're like brand spanking new to the world of um, Floss 2. But um, 
Jan Hicks is, you know, I mean, she's a, a very popular, I mean, she has over 10,000 subscribers, that kind of thing. But she has a video that's called Testing Fabric for Full Coverage Cross Stitch. And so she had some samples of um, even weave fabrics and she did tests doing uh, one strand versus two strand and tent stitch versus uh, full cross. And so like she did, you know, one strand tent, two strand tent, one strand, you know, and so on. So I think from watching that, that um, my preference is going to be to do um, a 28 count full cross one over one. Instead of, you know, two over two, I'm gonna do one over one on 25 count easy grid. No, 28 count, 28 count. Um, I like the idea of doing it on 32 count because it would come out even smaller, but I don't, I don't know. I don't remember if it was the coverage or if I felt like it would be a little hard to, you know, of course it would be harder to stitch, you know, over one on 32 compared to over 28. So um, that's what I'm going to plan to do going forward. I think that's all I've got. Um, I do have some bags I'm planning on getting cut out. Um, the person in the North Alabama stitchers that I pulled or, you know, got her name for the exchange. I want to make her some project bags to put in with her patterns that I bought her. I bought the flosses for her today. Um, and I'm going to make, you know, some little floss uh, drops and some floss, you know, bling to, um, to go with it and braid the flosses and everything like I did, you know, for my exchange for the retreat. So I'm hoping to work on that the next week. I have to have that in the mail by the end of this month. And so, um, yeah, I need, to, I need to get working on that. I did finally come up with a plan of uh, like a cutting diagram for my cutting out bags. And I think that's going to help me a lot because before it was just sort of every time I got ready to cut, it was like, okay, what's the best way to, you know, what's the best way, what's the best use of this fabric so I actually, you know, did a grid on my iPad and, you know, did the measurements and everything. So hopefully that'll help me. Um, that's all stitching wise. So um, life update. Uh, our older grandson has started public school for the first time. He's in ninth grade. Um, he's been homeschooled until now. Um, He's doing well. He didn't really want to go. He's very, um, he's very much a homebody, very introverted. Um, but I think he's, you know, he's liking it well enough. It's not like um, he's hating it or anything. So, and he, you know, sounds like he's, he's wanting to be able to be there to learn. And it's kind of frustrating because like one of the classes that he's in, um, there's this one kid, you know, who's, you know, ninth grade, so 14, 15 years old, and he just gets up in the middle of the class and, you know, does, uh, you know, like, I don't know, interpretive dance or yoga moves or something, you know, and that's, you know, he's having a hard time concentrating in that class, let's say that. So, yeah. Um, otherwise, work. It's been going okay. We have been seeing more people being diagnosed with COVID. So we're trying to keep those folks out of the office. You know, if they call and they sound like they're having symptoms, we'll, you know, try to get them to go get tested. We don't test in our office, so we'll try to get them to go get tested at a, a lab or a pharmacy. And, you know, then we can do a telehealth visit with them. So hoping just everybody stays safe, that kind of thing. So the other life update that I wanted to talk about, um, this is the reason why I saved it to the end, the piece that I told you about that I thought I wanted to do in memory of someone. Um, a week ago today, uh, quite by accident, I found out um, that someone, basically my boyfriend in high school, the only other, you know, man that I've ever been serious enough, you know, about besides my husband 
um, he passed away back in November and I had no idea. And so, um, you know, I had dreamed about him on Saturday and he hadn't really been active on Facebook in quite a while, but you know, whenever I dream about him or, you know, I feel like God puts him on my heart, you know, I'd always go and just look and make sure, you know, it was everything okay. And so, you know, I went to his Facebook page and his birthday was back in April. And so, you know, that was all he, pretty much all he had on his page the last couple of years was just birthday wish, wishes. And, you know, the first one said happy birthday. And then I saw several in a row that said happy heavenly birthday. And I'm like, what? Um, you know, I had, <laughs> had no idea. Like, I never saw anyone post anything. You know, I figured, you know, that if something happened to him, I would have seen an obituary posted by someone on Facebook or something like that. Couldn't even find an obituary, honestly. Um, I finally did, you know, I reached out to people that we were in school with together and they didn't, they just knew that, you know, yeah, I heard he passed away, but you know, they didn't know anything. And so I just, you know, that next morning, that last Sunday morning, I got up and I was still like, you know, just on my, you know, my heart and my mind, it just breaks my heart. And so, uh, I did a little bit more searching, you know, trying to, you know, like what happened. And um, I finally found, ran across his Caring Bridge page and so found out that he had been diagnosed with esophageal cancer in the summer of 2021. Um, it looked like, you know, he might would have, you know, beat it and then it had spread to his liver. And it still looked like, you know, I mean, beat it, but, you know, having, you know, uh, surgeries and all of this stuff and treatments, you know, um, but then it just started um, really growing rapidly. And so um, in November, you know, they posted and said, you know, pray, pray for, you know, Kevin to make the transition, you know, peacefully. And I think he did, but you know, I know the last months of his life was, you know, not great, horrible. And like I said, it just really has affected me. Um, his parents have already survived one child and now they've survived, you know, another one. And thinking about, you know, his wife and his kids, his grandkid, um, and just the world because, you know, everybody says, you know, about people, you know, this person was really special. He was really special. He was so smart and um, he was who he was. And, you know, there was no pretense with him, um, you know, and even though we didn't end up together, like when we were together, you know, he even when I didn't deserve it, even when I didn't think that I was worthy of it, you know, he loved me regardless. And so that kind of person is who he was. And I haven't seen this person in over 30 years. I, you know, haven't even talked to him. We connected, you know, probably 10 years ago on Facebook, you know, just, you know, posting, commenting and stuff like that. But, just to know that he's not here anymore has really broken my heart. And so I've been dealing with that all week, you know, going to work, holding it in, coming home, falling apart, that kind of thing. So I'll just think about, you know, remembering Kevin's family and your prayers are appreciated. So that piece that I showed you, the, the sampler hope, it has the quote from Emily Dickinson about, you know, hope being the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. Um, and I feel like that's just really appropriate for, to stitch in honor of him. So I think I'm gonna, um, I think that's what I'm gonna do, that piece for. I love stitching on it. 
I really do. I don't want to put it down when I start stitching on it. So, um, you know, when I get finished with Jane Eyre as my focus piece, it might be my next focus piece. And, you know, <laughs> flea market flowers will still be waiting a year from now to be my focus piece. Uh, oh, if y'all been here before, you know I can't stand stitching on flea market flowers. So I was hoping to, like, make it my focus piece and get it finished. And it's just not happening because I hate stitching on it. So, and I don't know why it's really pretty. It's just those flowers just take forever to stitch. Okay. I think that's all for now. That's it. So, I hope you guys have a good rest of the weekend. Have a good Labor Day here in the United States. I'm looking forward to having Monday off. Um, you know, it's a good long weekend. We don't work Fridays already, and so I needed that. I missed one day last week anyway because I was sick. Um, so I always enjoy those longer weekends, but I will more than likely be back in a month unless something miraculous happens and I have all kind of energy and can, you know, do videos before then. But um, if not, I will see y'all um, the first Saturday in October. And... Happy stitching. Bye.